What's up, Journey students? Welcome back to week six of 40 Days. If we haven't had the opportunity to meet yet, my name is Carl Moore, and I have the privilege of serving as the student coordinator on our Deltona location. Um, and I want to start tonight off, honestly, by looking at, uh, looking at something we spend a lot of our time focusing on. And that's the past. Because if we're honest with ourselves, we spend a ton of time looking at past mistakes, past failures, gosh, our entire past life before we accepted Jesus into it. We look at everything up until that point. But then we also spend a ton of our time focusing on the future, what is to come. You get all of these external pressure from other people and, hey, you've got to figure out your future. Do you have a, a five-year plan? Have, have you spent enough time focusing and looking at, hey, what colleges do you need to apply for and what happens if you don't make it into those colleges? Do you have backups for your backups to your backups to your backups? Like, like what are your plans with that? Or even if you're in middle school, like, hey, like, what, what are you going to do when you get to high school? Do you have any clubs that you want to join? What if that club doesn't accept you into it? Or, or what if you don't make that sports team? Or, or what, what sports sports team do you even want to be a part of? Or how do you balance all of those classes along with sports and along with everything else? You get all of these external pressure on your future. Hey, what's to come? What's next? And I, I, I want to be honest with you guys. I wholeheartedly support these ideas. It's important for you to think through them, but only if it's mixed with the truth. And the reality of it is, are you willing to allow God to move in your life now for the future that he promises you? Are you willing to allow God to move in your life now for the future that he promises you? Because if you're just doing it all to do it because you want to have security, that's likely going to just fall out from underneath you. You can't be so fixated on some sort of a plan that you made and you forgot the reason why you're doing that plan to even begin with. The whole purpose of why we walk through life is for an eternity with God in heaven. So we can't be so fixated on something that might not work out the way that we expected it to. And sometimes that can be a blessing. Sometimes God changes our plan and he adapts it to his plan on what he had to begin with for our blessing, for our good, to try and keep us from something that was ultimately going to destroy us. We have no idea how God is protecting us sometimes. But God is always working for our good. And I, I want to talk to you guys about something, if we can be real with each other for a moment too. Our time here on earth, it's limited. And I know that's like a whole vibe killer. I know like the whole room went down like, oh, wow, Carl, that's really depressing. Why, why are we talking about that? Like, it's, it's a reality. And it's important that we talk about it because tomorrow's not promised for anyone. You have no idea what tomorrow's even going to look like. So it's super important that we talk about it because we have no idea what, what each day is in store for us. See, life, it's a lot like silly string. It's super important. And you start life, and it's fruitful, and you, and you start going through it, and it's going on, and it's really long and eventful, and you just keep going, and it keeps going, and you're going throughout life, and there's so many things going on, and you just keep moving through life. You keep doing different things. You keep experiencing new things. Life gets amazing, but eventually, towards the end of it, it gets slower and slower and slower until it has nothing left to give. Then it's over. Once life is over, it's over. Just like that silly string can. I can't pick all of that back up and put it back in that can and reshoot it back out. There is no redo. It's over. When it's out, it's out. And so I want to spend tonight looking at this idea. How do we, this question, how do we, how do we live in the present and then still keep our eyes focused, fixated, on an eternity with Jesus. And I want to start that by going into Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11 through 13. It says this, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to grow you hope and a future. Then you will call on me, and you will come and pray with me, and I will listen to you, and you will seek me and find me, and when you seek me with all of your heart, I will be. See, eternity is one of like these really important concepts when it comes to the Bible. It's one of the most important attributes of God. We take this concept sometimes uh, for granted. Eternity, it's where God resides. It's where he lives. 
Eternity is where we're going to go when our life, when our silly string can, it runs out. We're going to go and have an eternity that we were initially made for. What eternity means is no matter what we face, no matter how hard life gets, no matter what comes against us, we can still have hope. We read that back in Jeremiah. It says, hey, God says, I have plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. That's how we continue to move on throughout the rest of our lives, that God's got, God plans to give us hope and a future, a fixated mindset that no matter what happens, the end goal is we get to live a life rejoicing with God in heaven day after day after day. So no matter what the present circumstances look like, we have that to look forward to. See, the gift of eternity, it's present. The moment you accept Jesus into your life, you have this gift. It's been given to you. The moment you accept Jesus, the moment you say, hey, Jesus, you are my Lord and I want you in my life. I don't want to live the way I was doing before. But there's a reason you don't just get like beamed up instantly into heaven. There's a reason that God doesn't remove you from earth right then and there. Because he could, he's all powerful. He absolutely could. But he says that there's a reason we're still here on earth. We have a purpose still left here. So it's important to keep your eyes fixated on the future that God has for us, but not by neglecting the present that he still has us in. See, our time on, on earth, it's valuable for both us and the people around us. And so you might have, you might have heard before that God, uh, Jesus, on his way out, um, he gives the disciples and every one of his, his, his followers a mission and says, hey, like, you are going to go baptize people. You are going to go make disciples. You're going to go preach the gospel. You're going to go preach the good news after I die, get buried, and I resurrect. You're going to go preach this good news to people. They're going to hear the gospel. They're going to know that they are saved and that they can have an eternity with me in heaven. But your mission while you are still here is you need to make disciples, preaching this good news to people who have never heard it before and then also diving deeper with people who have heard it so they can have a deeper and closer relationship with me. He gives us this, this, this mission and we can really see it in Paul's life. And see, Paul's motivation, he was to sacrifice everything that he has to follow Jesus Christ. He knew that one day at the end, the name of Jesus, everyone's going to bow in heaven and on earth. That every tongue's going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We read that Philippians chapter 2. And then, and then Paul has a response to this in Philippians chapter 3, starting in verse 12. He says this. I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection. I press on to the possesses of perfection for which Jesus has first possessed in me. So no, dear brothers and sisters, I haven't achieved it, but I focus on one thing. He says this, forgetting the the past. I focus on one thing, forgetting the past, but I always look forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach this end of the race and receive the heavenly prize on which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling for us. See, he's pressing forward, not forgetting, not neglecting, not saying, hey, the past never happened. He's using the past, the mistakes, everything that he has done wrong, every sin that he's ever committed to look forward and say, hey, I might have done those things, but thank God, thank Jesus Christ that I'm forgiven in those things because now I get to look forward for what God has for me in the future. But the entire idea, he's saying, hey, I haven't reached the perfect. I'm still in the present. And this entire time I have here on earth, there's a reason, there's a purpose behind it. God still has me here. So I'm going to keep aiming towards it. I'm going to keep looking forward towards perfection, looking forward towards the future, not by neglecting my past, but living in the present with an idea that, hey, I one day I get to live with Christ Jesus rejoicing in it every single day. That our life's have worth because of what Jesus has done for us. That the mission 
that we have. We get a fullness from it because of Jesus' life and how he gave it for us. We pursue this mission of the gospel so that others can receive this good news with whatever time we have left here on this world. So I want to look at this question. What holds us back from ever living in the fullness and looking forward towards it? It's not that we're not saved. We talked about that. The moment you accept Jesus into your life, you're saved. You have, that, you have that fullness. You are able to live, and you are able to live for Jesus, and you are able to have this eternity with God sitting at the right hand. You have a seat that's prepared for you in heaven, a mansion that is ready for you to walk into and live the rest of your life with God. Infinity, all of time. So, What's holding us back? That's this idea. What's holding us back from living in the fullness? It's this one word, it's fear. Fear of what could happen. Fear, fear of, hey, I, I, I might go fall back into the same past mistakes that I've already gone to or, or looking towards ahead and going, hey, I, there's, there's so many things that might happen and, and that person might ridicule me. That person might make fun of me for my faith. That person might just full on reject me. That person might not say anything at all. Like, I, 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 I got fear. But how would you live your life if you stopped allowing fear to dictate your future. We know, we know David. David's the strong, confident character in the Bible. Someone who's always been told, hey, this is a man after God's own heart. He lived, he lived with this fear of the Lord where he was constantly doing things that other people were like, dude, you're insane. You are going to get yourself killed. And every single time God pulled through with him. How does he live in that confidence? I want to start by looking in... Uh, the book of Psalms, starting in chapter 27. It says this, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger, so why should I tremble? When wicked, evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and foes, they attack me, they are the ones that will stumble. Though a mighty army might surround me, my heart's not afraid. Even if I'm attacked, I will remain confident. Yeah, yeah, that, that confidence, I want to know how to have that. Because if you're like me, you're saying like, man, man I'm, I'm fearful. I'm anxious over just the little decisions that happen in my life. I start to already think of all of the possible outcomes of however little decision is going to affect my entire future. So like, how, how do I live with this confidence that if an entire army is going to come against me, that I can stand strong and say, I already have victory in this? Let's keep reading. Let's see what David says about it. He says, hey, the one thing that I ask of God, the one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek the most is to live in the house of the Lord all, all of the days of my life delighting in the Lord's perfections, not David's perfections, not what he thinks he's done right, the, that he's living in all of God's perfections and how God's already won those battles. And how does he do it? And meditating in his temple or in his place of worship by stopping and pursuing God and praising him in the moment, no matter what the circumstance looks like. Verse 5, it says, For he will conceal me when, there, when the trouble comes. He will hide me in the sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock. There I will hold my head up high above the enemies that surround me in this. And at his sanctuary, I will offer shouts of joy, sacrifices by singing and praising the Lord with music. So how, how is he able to live this confidence? By stopping and not fixating on his current situation and the circumstance and everything that's surrounding him, by not focusing on the army that's coming against him and the opposition, but instead by stopping, taking a moment and praising God in the middle of it and already saying, hey God, I know the plans that you have for me. They're not to harm me. They're actually to prosper me, to grow me, to love me, and I'm going to praise you in the middle even when the battle I can't see the end of it. I'm going to praise you in that. He lives in a confidence by knowing that the goodness of God is always on display, that the glory of God is always on display, even if the circumstance is bad. We take a look at Paul's life living in, a, in prison, knowing he's going to be executed for not even doing anything wrong. 
being thrown in prison just because he's following Jesus, having that persecution against him. And what does he do? He praises in a prison cell. We see this confidence all throughout the Bible. We continue, verse 7, it says this, Hear me as I pray, O Lord. So we get an inside look at David's heart here as he prays to God. And we get to see some really cool things here. He says, hear me as I pray, O Lord. Be merciful and answer me. My heart has heard you. And you say, hey, come talk to me. Come talk to me in prayer. And I responded, my heart responds, Lord, I'm coming to you. I'm coming before you. Please don't turn your back on me. Don't reject me, your servant, in anger. You've always been my helper always been there for me. Don't leave me now. Don't abandon me. Oh God, you are my salvation. And then he prays this continue. He says, even if my mother and father here on earth abandon me, I'm going to hold you even closer. I'm going to draw even closer to you. I'm going to trust even more in you because even if my circumstance changes, I still have you to cling to. And here's what he says at the end of it. He says, teach me how to live. Lead me along the right path. For my enemies, they await me. Do not let me fall into their hands. They accuse me of things I have never done, and every breath they threaten me with violence, but yet I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness while I am here in the land of the living. Wait patiently for the Lord and be brave and courageous. And then he repeats it because it's ever so important. Wait patiently for the Lord. So I don't want to leave you with like this kind of idea where you might be thinking, hey, you know what? Life's pointless. I'm looking forward towards eternity. I already have that eternity with God, so I don't want to do anything here on earth. That's not what I'm telling you. I'm telling you that we've been given this mission and we've been entrusted with the gospel to go share that with people, show people Jesus' love and grace. But the entire time, every decision, every choice, everything we do, we, we focus on this idea that there is an eternity and there is goodness just on the other side. So even if I'm in a bad circumstance. I don't have to live in that fear, but instead I can live confidently and in boldness by pursuing what God has for me in the future. It allows us to actually just take a moment, zoom out and see like the full scope of things and say, hey, my life's not just the circumstance. My life is this evolving pursuit, always going towards what Jesus has for me. We can see it in David's life here. A circumstance doesn't dictate his life. He has people coming against him. There's fear in his heart. He's crying out to God, hey, don't don't abandon me. Don't look away from me. I'm here. Don't, Don't neglect me in anger. God, I'm here. I need you in my life. You can see the fear in his heart. But but instead, towards the end of that, he goes, But God, I know your goodness is still here. That my time here on earth, I am still going to see your face. I am still going to see your goodness prevail. So don't let them come against me. But instead, God, reveal yourself to them. That's how David lives. He walks confidently in this boldness because of this one verse right here. Deuteronomy 31 verse 8, it says this, The Lord himself goes before you. And he will be with you. He does not leave you, nor does he forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged that my God is with you. And if my God is with you, who can be against you? This is the same God who's created everything to have ever existed. He's this all-powerful, all-knowing God. Everything has to have come from him. And so if my God is with you, who can be against you? So I don't want you to take this life for granted. I don't want you to think that there's no purpose and there's no value because Jesus clearly states there is purpose, there is value in the time that you still have here. So you need to go. You need to be preaching the gospel to people. You need to be making disciples. You need to be telling them about Jesus. It doesn't matter if that circumstance feels awkward and they tell you like, hey, I'm not really, I don't really care about Jesus. I don't want to learn about Jesus. You keep pressing in on that. God's not saying you're the one that's going to make it happen. But he's calling you to keep pushing it, even if they don't want it. Not being forceful, not telling them, hey, you're coming to church no matter what or else you're going to hell. God's not saying to go do that. No, he's saying go preach my love to people. Go show them what it's like to feel that joy 
They, they might not have, they might have never felt before. Go show them what it's like to have true joy, what it's like to actually feel loved on by someone. But he also says, hey, be patient. Letting go of those past mistakes, don't condemn yourself from the past, but also be excited for the future that I have for you all in the moment of staying right where you are because you get an eternity with me in heaven. Well, there's no evil. There's no one to come against you. But instead, we just get to rejoice the rest of eternity, all of infinity, with Jesus. You guys pray with me. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you. God, we thank you for your son Jesus and what he did on a cross for us. God, we thank you, God, for how you are moving in our life currently. God, I pray right now, no matter what circumstance we're in, whether we're on the mountaintop or we're in the middle of a valley, God, you would remind us of your goodness. God, you would reveal your face to us. We would be able to see you, hear you, talk with you, God. And I pray that we can draw even closer with that. God, I pray that we would have more time spending with you. We would be able to spend even more time in your word, even more time in prayer. We would have an eternity in in heaven with you, God. But I pray right now that even the time left that we have here on this earth. God, you would give us a life full of purpose. You would give us a life full of significance. God, you would allow us to use whatever area of influence we have to tell people about you, Jesus, to tell people more about the good news of Christ and allow us to be the vessels you move through, Jesus. God, we are so thankful for how you've moved in our past, and we are so ecstatic knowing that your goodness is there in our future. God, we love you and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen.